Whether you are single, in a full family, or empty nesters, the great struggle in the Christian home is maintaining a family prayer time. Either busyness or simply falling out of habit may trip you up. On today's lesson, uh, we will study our Lord's, uh, our Lord Jesus' prayer to strengthen our personal as well as family prayer time together. Lord, teach us to pray. The genuine desire of the disciples' hearts to learn to pray from the great teacher is my request as well. I could use so many helps in prayer, but I can go to Jesus directly. Lord, teach me to pray. Lord, teach me to pray to the Heavenly Father for myself, as my marriage, and my home. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus warns the disciples not to pray empty words like the Pharisees who competed in lengthy prayers rather than with weighty words. For the Pharisees, prayer was simple obedience to religious duty. You and I know prayer is a good spiritual habit to undertake, but if that is all that prayer is, busyness or other priorities will trip us up and take it over. Our Lord's warning of wrong ways to pray before teaching us just how to pray ought to give us a little pause before we study Matthew 6. Prayer is not some form of religious duty God made up just to see if we would obey. This is a mercy. Prayer is a mercy. What if I told you that right now you are in the middle of a heated battlefield? It is spiritual, and if we are not intentional to understand the biblical worldview, we will be tempted to simply coast through our days, casually pray over our meals, and let that be that. The tempter, however, is lurking, and his temptations are tempting to us because we are so weak that our flesh is so weak and, and, and corrupted. In the heat of battle, God has given us prayer that we may endure and be strong. Cowardice is exchanged for courage, weakness for strength, sorrow for joy, chaos for peace, and it's all found in his amazing grace and giving us prayer. Your entire home is under attack in this very sinful fallen world. We each lack strength. Apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. You are poor and you are needy. God, however, is mighty and a faithful provider. We must consider who we are talking to in prayer. God is terrifying and perfectly holy. Whatever your greatest earthly fears are, spiders, needles, public speaking, getting caught in a lie, whatever it is, God is far more fearful beyond our senses and beyond our ability to comprehend. That momentary fear that stiffens the entire body of a bungee jumper off of a bridge is nothing in comparison to an encounter and in the presence of the Almighty. Then how can I approach the mercy seat of God's awesome, fearful presence with boldness? Not in my works or in my worth or what I can bring to the table to God in some sort of bargaining arrangement. No, it's all found on Christ. It's on his perfect works, him being our Savior, our place of reconciliation, our Savior Jesus Christ being our righteousness before a holy God. In Christ and in Christ alone is our boldness to approach. This faith in Christ, this joy of being forgiven and reconciled to God through Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross for my sin and raised from the dead that I might have um, everlasting life and a living hope for me and for my family, ought to stir our hearts to approach the mercy seat of God with thanksgiving. Lord, teach us to pray. Pray then like this, he said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. The beginning place in this prayer is our adoption as God's children. 
He is our heavenly Father. Before we were children of wrath, dead in our trespasses and sin, as Paul told us in Ephesians 2. As God the Father said over Jesus' baptism, this is my Son, whom I am well pleased. In Christ, beloved, our heavenly Father is well pleased with us. He remembers our sin no more. But in, our, in place is Christ's perfect righteousness in whom God the Father is fully and well pleased. The Father loves his family. He loves his children. And he loves my family. He loves my children. He cares with great compassion to listen to each of my family's prayer requests and our thanksgiving and our praises before him together as a family. His name is hallowed or holy. I am reminded of Moses' approach to the burning bush. Take off your sandals, the Lord said, for you are standing on holy ground. God is infinitely and eternally holy, and he is just. It is important for me to be reminded of this glorious truth, as well as to remind my family when we are in prayer together. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. God is king, and he is a good king. His rule in heaven is total and pure, and the heavenly host rejoice in his awesome presence and just rule as king. Yet yeah, we live here on earth. It is fallen. We can grumble about the world's condition. My children see all of its corruption and ugliness, how ugly people can be to one another, how ugly we can be to others when we are tempted to be. What a display of immense beauty is a home ruled by God, the only wise king. Like a ray of sunshine piercing a gloomy day and dancing across a meadow is a home that is happily ruled by God going through this gloomy world of chaos and selfish pride and violence. God, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. That is in me, in my home as it is in heaven. God's rule is spoken in his word. Our Jesus commands burdensome to you and into your family. No, they are to be a delight. His law is my joy like sweet honey from a honeycomb is its wise instructions for me and my own. Our homes are to be sacred places where God's word is joyfully learned and we pray your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heavenly Father, whose name is hallowed, rule over me. Rule over my marriage. Rule over my home. Give us this day our daily bread. I think as an historian, just how precious bread was in the first century Mediterranean world. It was a mark of daily sustenance for yourself and your home. I imagine the Israelites in the wilderness careful to collect enough manna for their home each and each day, twice before the Sabbath, just to feed their family. Jesus, who compassionately fed the 4,000 as well as the 5,000. In prayer, it is healthy to be reminded that the food that comes on our table, the food that my family eats, is all given by God's merciful, providing hand. It is not the reward of being a good worker or earned because I'm a good person. God, in his loving mercy for his children, feed his children. I remind my children that food doesn't have to taste good, but God, in his mercy, makes food taste good and enjoyable to remind us that God is to be enjoyed. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Ask in prayer that God would be generous in his mercy to continue to provide your daily bread. Give my family our daily bread by your rich mercies that are for us in Jesus Christ. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Our marriages and our homes can be places for spiritually healthy forgiveness in God's ministry of reconciliation or they can be places of grudges and gossip, undermining the character of other people, slander, evil talk, or in other words, they can be places where we feel safe to add spiritual interest to our debtors. 
You and your home are to display the gospel of Jesus Christ, the savior of sinners, the forgiver of debtors. How ugly is the servant forgiven of an unpayable debt to the king, released from prison only to find someone who owes him a few bucks, beats him up, and puts him in debtor's prison. Beloved, Christian homes are to be places to learn gentleness to those who are deserving our wrath and forgiveness to those deserving our punishment. My wife is watching how I talk about those who wound me. She is watching how I treat them and talk about them after they hurt me, after they sin against me. She is watching how I believe God has forgiven me. My children are listening to my wife and I talk about sinners and wrongdoers in our lives. Do we seek forgiveness and reconciliation through Christ, displaying his power and his mercy? Or do their little ears hear us gossip or slander, adding ad additional interest, spiritual interest to our debtors? This part of our Lord's Prayer is very convicting, but it's teaching of God's mercy. What a joy it is to know that we are forgiven. As Psalm 32 sings, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed, happy, rejoicing. Oh, my debt is completely paid off. Jesus has paid it off. May this joy translate in our homes to be happy, forgiving homes. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Fear the Lord who leads you in your home. I know I am weak, and I know I'm very capable of sin. Sin of pride, sin which wounds others, sin which delights in pleasures which are crimes against my holy God, who is just and mighty. Light the path of righteousness for me, Heavenly Father. Light the path of righteousness for my wife and for my children. This prayer is very honest and raw. First, temptations are coming and they will always be coming. Like the onslaught of war from the enemy, temptations will just bombard me, my wife, and my children. We are tempted by the evil one. God is my mighty protector. God, lead us. Lead my family. Protect us. Let, us not, let not temptation lead us, but God, our King, our Good Shepherd, lead us. Deliver us from evil. That also means that God delivers sinners by grace through Christ. Yes, so deliver us from those evils. Yet also, evil is calamity. Um, disease, illnesses, financial strange, even natural disasters. Deliver your people, Heavenly Father. Deliver us from evil that we may join with the Holy Congregation on Sunday to hear your word and rejoice. May each of our homes be sacred places of worship of our God as beloved children who pray. And I pray that this lesson encourages each of you in prayer to our gracious, compassionate, loving Heavenly Father. May his grace and peace be with you all.